Hi everyone, I hope you're all doing well. One of you guys asked me to do a video on special alignments. So this one is about a part that has two offset circles. And we'll look at how to set that up. We're going to create an alignment that will align this part to an offset bore. So this part, if we look at it from the Z direction, it actually has an offset bore that we need to align to. It's not directly across in the X direction. So we'll go step by step how to make that. So start by extracting our datum features. So the plane would be datum A. And then we'll take a circle on each of these bores. So we'll use those features to set up our base alignment. I'll click base alignment create new base alignment and um, a side note we could have done that all from here for example if we had no features to begin with and we go back to the base alignment create a new base alignment if we extract our base alignment features it will automatically put them in where they should be in your alignment, which is really helpful for simple alignments. But so that you can know what's going on in the background, I recommend you do it the long way first. That way you really understand what's going on behind the scenes. So we'll start over. Plane, circle, circle. Okay, so we have our plane and two circles. So first step is to use the plane as your spatial rotation, which is really the leveling. So these two labels, the spatial rotation and the planar rotation, can be really confusing sometimes because it sounds like a similar thing. but if we could rename those labels, we could call it the spatial leveling, which will be either a plane or a 3D axis cylinder type feature. And then the second section, the planar rotation, we could rename that to be the clocking or the skew of the part. Now, when you're setting up your base alignment or any alignment, you don't necessarily have to do this in the order that it's shown. It often helps to set it up one feature at a time. So plane one is going to be the spatial or the leveling and it will also be the Z origin. Uh, the next thing we know is the X and Y origin is on circle one. And then lastly, the planar rotation, or the clocking, is on circle 2, which is in the x positive direction. So from our xy origin, it points toward the circle 2 clocking. That's what it's swinging towards. When you select your planar rotation, and you click the button, and click a feature, it will pop up with this flyout menu that you can't get rid of when you click out anywhere else. And so what you have to do is select an option. Which direction is this feature rotating towards? And if you don't know at the time, just click one of them and it will put it in this drop down menu. And you can always change it later if you need to. And you'll see next to your base alignment there'll be a preview of what your alignment will look like after you click OK. So in this case we want to go in the X positive direction. Now we look down on it and it's slightly different than the way the CAD model was created. We want the part to be in this orientation level to this line, level to this edge, but it is not. So what we have to do is go to the special button and in this window rotate to a distance to the x-axis. 
So that's one way to do it. If you know the basic distance in the y direction from 0 to the x-axis, you can enter that in here. The second way is to rotate by distances. If you know both the x and y distances, you can enter them here. Third way is if you know the angle, you can click rotate by angle and type in the angle here. So every drawing is different in how it shows the basic dimensions between two holes like this. Sometimes it shows only one direction as a basic dimension. Sometimes it shows both x and y, or it might even show an angle. So there's, I'll show you the three ways how to do that. Uh, if you have only the y distance in this case, um, the drawing shows 0.4 inches. So that would be this option, rotate to distance to the x positive axis. So we have 0.4 inches and that would set up our alignment like so. It went the opposite direction that we expected, so you go back and put a negative sign there and click OK. So really this distance would be from the origin to wherever you're swinging to. Is that positive or negative? The second way to do an offset like this is rotate by distances. So on our drawing it shows 5.384 in the x direction and 0.4 in the y direction and it automatically calculates an angle for you. Now in this case the y direction is not negative because we're rotating counterclockwise and the angle calculated here is positive. A third way to do this is rotate by an angle. If you know that angle already between the nominal horizontal x-axis and the hole you're rotating to can put that in here. So those are the three ways you can do that offset and they're all slightly different. Um, basically the rotate by distances is a good option in most cases especially if you have the x and y basic d distances to the hole you're trying to offset to. That way it, it shares the deviation between x and y. If you only do rotate distance to x-axis on one of the basic dimensions, then that one basic dimension will be perfect and then the other one will be taking all the deviation. Because oftentimes this second hole has a true position callout back to the first hole. So I hope that makes sense. Uh, let me know if you have any questions and have a great day.